Minmus. Cold, icy remnant of an early solar system. Or a refreshing mint dessert planet. It is neither. Currently, all it is is the temporary home of Voltion Kerman. Stranded with no engine and no way to get home. Until now. Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here. <laughs> Playing a little Kerbal Space Program and being a little uh, melodramatic probably, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, I remembered I forgot to do the contract that I was so excited about doing because it just happened to fall in my lap that I could test, um, or did I? Actually, maybe, no, I didn't. Here we go. I could test the small gear on bay on Minmus in orbit 39, 500 meters to 5,300 meters. I have no idea if I have the, uh, the fuel for this, but I thought it would be fun to try. Um, we're halfway through our monopropellant, though. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to turn this guy around. Turn the ship around. I'm actually trying to turn it around with the... It would almost be better to do this. Here, let's hop ourselves up off the ground here. Actually, this might just be the better way to go is, is go forward. Um, the, the big problem is if we do run out of monoprop trying this, Voltaion dies. And I'm pretty sure we're going to run out of monoprop doing this. Because we are not even going 30 meters per second yet. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna cancel all... Canceling all flights. We're just going to come back down. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be hurt. This is going to be hurt. Oh, things are flying. We're only going 23 meters per second. The problem is, is if we lose this back part here, like we're going to any second now, there we go. Okay, things are going fine. We're, we're good, we're all good. Okay, I could probably kill the rotation. Oh, oh, see, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, we're going EVA. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs> I was just too afraid that the cockpit would end up in the, uh, crashing into the surface here. Well, oh, there we go. Did it blow up? No, it didn't blow up. Something else blew up. But, uh, anyway, I don't know if you noticed, I've installed, uh, Astronomer's Pack, and I've also installed Universe Replacer to take advantage of Astronomer's Pack. And, uh, other than that, we're just, uh... Getting Voltaion back to his ship here. I have a plan to save Voltaion from certain death. And that plan involves the ships you guys have sent me. Uh, I don't have a ship that can get to Minmus. Oh, I think I lost two uh, goo containers. I should probably take all the science out of this. And then go find my goo containers. I'll do that off camera. Um, I, I have a I have a ship that can get to Minmus, and I have a ship that can bring down one more Kerbal than it brings up. But I don't. Oh, I'm like, why can't I right click? That's because I don't have this thing. I don't have a ship that can get to Minmus and bring back one more Kerbal than uh, it takes up. So what I'm going to do is I am going to launch two ships. And then we are going to see... Okay, we do have a goo container here. So you gotta, you gotta go find those. Um, we are gonna go... Uh, we are gonna launch those two ships. We're gonna come up here. We're gonna pick up Voltine. He's gonna get on the ladder. He's gonna fly home on the ladder. Then he's gonna get in the other ship and then land. That's what we're gonna call Plan A. Uh, if this fails, at least Voltion will die. And possibly the person who's coming up to get him is going to die. If it works, though, it's going to be the coolest thing ever. Okay, and the first of these ships is Encro's recoverable 
uh, whatever it's called. I should probably know these things before I say them. Uh, recoverable Rescue Mark One, And the plan with this ship is to get it up into low Kerbal orbit, uh, make sure it can do that before we launch any anything uh, bigger, and then uh, just have it sit up there and wait for the next thing to come. It has parachutes on it, but I don't have debris refunds, so they're kind of wasted. But oh well. Here we go. Um, I expect this launch to be very boring, so I'm not going to make you watch it. Uh, I will just uh, come back when we are in orbit. Okay, the boy's down on the ground after we got this thing up in the air, and we see that we still have 1388 meters per second left on it. Have decided that this is enough meters per second to get to Minmus and get in orbit around it. So that Voltaion can use his jetpack in his suit to get up to the ship and meet it, and then fly it home. That's what we call Plan A. <laughs> That's what we call the new Plan A, I should say. Um, so, we are going to do this. This is what we are going to do, and I somehow got my debris up on the screen. Um, so where is Minmus right now? It is right here. Let us set this as our target, and look at that. It's like... It's like this was made to happen here. Let's add a node right here, see if this will actually do it. It's in five minutes. If this will get us a nice encounter, we're taking it. We're a little bit late to the party. So we need to burn a little bit later. This is a pretty darn good encounter, really. And I burned up this ship's ability to have electric charge. Not only that, but it's got an encounter with the moon that's going to fling it out of the system <laughs> forever. So, basically, it's trash. Um, so, I'm going to launch another one. We have solar panels. Um, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to add a solar panel to this guy. Because I'm not going to do this again. So, I will be back when the next ship is on its way to Minmus. Not at the awesome maneuver node point. Um, yeah, we're going to... We're gonna, pass over Minmus. I was coming up to the to the ascending node so I could so I could burn south and get a nice connection with Minmus. And now we're just gonna we're just gonna fly out of the system. So awesome. Uh, I'll be back with the next ship. Just so you can see what I did here, I put uh, four solar panels on here, three around the outside and one on the top. Um, the only way it won't get sunlight is if um, I aim it directly away from the sun. So hopefully I won't forget to do that <laughs> and it totally just to be 100 percent clear this is not Ancro's fault he built this thing to be really low tech level i failed to take that into account when i flew it so somehow by adding the weight of these solar panels which actually i i want i actually know why <laughs> uh the solar panels don't have any weight um i've got an extra 100 meters per second which just makes me happier um the reason i i have that extra meters per second is because i took the parachutes off and figured if i'm changing the shape i might as well i might as well make another change um because those parachutes only would have helped me if uh if if i had debris refund the, the mod debris refund installed so that i could get those back um, I don't have any real plans to install debris refund. It's not that I don't like the mod. I love the I love the concept. I just uh, just don't have any plans to install it. So uh, I don't want to. Basically, I don't want to force you guys to do things that aren't stock. Um, I will probably in my new series be installing that, but that's in to be talked about in the future. Let's see. Let's set Minimus as our target. And uh, as has been said many times, you've seen this before, no need to see it again. So I will be back when this guy is at Minmus with a full set of batteries. Okay, we are here. We have a massive 475 meters per second left. Um, I had to delete the other ship. Um, I didn't do it to get rid of the debris, um, although it's being flung out of the system, so that's fair. I did it because I was getting really weird interactions between the two ships. I, I don't know if what it was, but like this guy's sphere of influence change wasn't working. The other guy's sphere of influence change was was working. The Kerbal Arm Rock was slowing down when nobody was changing sphere of influences. It was freaking me out, and I got scared, and so I deleted the, the ship. Um, so I'm I'm flipping around here. Uh, this guy's got two hours and thirty nine minutes before he's going to reach the sphere of influence. So I figured in the time we're waiting here, we're going to flip over to Voltaion's Minmus rover. And he's going to get himself up in the air, ready to, uh, 
So you take all the data out of here. <laughs> As things explode randomly. Okay, you have all the data that, that we can find. Um, I like that those that those things are exploding randomly because it means it's less debris. But uh, we're basically going to launch ourselves into the air. Um, we're pretty equatorial. So all we got to do is head east. And you're thinking to yourself, well, how am I supposed to know which way is east? Well, I could be so pedantic as to use the galaxy or perhaps where the sun is, but no. We're using the HUD. <laughs> uh, north on the HUD is the red line, so that's north. So east is going to be two lines over, and it's that way. So, Voltion, are you ready to go? You have a full pack of EVA propellant. We are going to hit R. We are going to go forward. And the cool thing is, is we even have a flight engineer on, on Voltion, which is awesome. And as long as this stays above the horizon, I'm just going to only thrust forward. And when we get an apoapsis of 10,000, I'm going to cut my engines. Ah... Uh, this is, this is the way to go. Oh, I can't do that, can I? <laughs> I can't look sideways, sadly. Oh, there's Kerbin rising. Oh, we got to get this. F2, Y. Okay, we're still above the horizon. We're, we're, our apoapsis is getting pretty high. Whoops, 17. That's way too high. But we've got plenty of monoprop. Actually, Voltaion, turn yourself around. This is going to be the screenshot. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, now, all we got to do is at our apoapsis. Uh, that's that's kind of scary there. We better we better watch this. But let's go ahead and plan our maneuver note at our apoapsis. To get our periapsis up, and then we'll worry about the rest of this later. Um, I'm going to watch this with much aplomb. I think that's a word. Just to make sure he never uh, crashes into something. His impact time is in 35 minutes, which implies that he's going to get off the ground and everything okay. <laughs> Contemplation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't I shouldn't get that that much joy out of this, but let's go ahead and speed time up here. I'm getting a little concerned about this mountain. I don't know about you, Voltaion. Our impact time still says 34 minutes. Are you going to trust the computer here or are you going to trust your gut? Uh I wanted to trust my gut and say that we're going to crash directly into that mountain. And we are going very fast. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that should... Keep us from smacking into this mountain. I don't know if we would have survived, but I am definitely not willing to take that chance. Look at that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we probably would have survived. But okay, now we're definitely going to survive. And of course, our orbit has been drastically changed for the worse. Uh, let's go ahead and precise node and get it back on there. Let's go ahead and snap it to our apoapsis. And our periapsis is at 7,000. I would rather it be closer to 10. Yeah, this, the nav HUD is, is awesome for this. <laughs> you are so unhappy. <laughs> because he can actually, I mean, he even has the maneuver node, I believe. Yeah, the maneuver node is even on his on the HUD. So he can actually aim at the maneuver node and, and all that good stuff. So it's, yeah, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, but anyway, you don't need to see this. Uh, I will come back when we're, when we're closer to uh, getting to a rendezvous. Okay, we have a maneuver node here. Uh, for a little bit of fiddling and finagling uh, with both Voltaion in orbit and with this ship, 
Um, this maneuver node, once burned, should give us a perfect... Oh, and I just remembered. I have thrust limited this guy all the way down to 7, so let's bring him up. Sadly, the game doesn't recalculate, but um, this 42 second burn, it's... Uh, what is that? 7? That's about 14. 14 goes into 42 uh, about 4 times. It's gonna, so it should be a little bit less than 4 second burn. So... We're just going to come down to Minmus here, but this burn will get us an encounter with Voltaion on the next orbit. In theory. <laughs> We're coming in here. Um, close the alarm and pause. There's Voltaion's quote-unquote rover. There's Voltaion, I believe. There he is. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> Uh, we're going to do this burn as perfectly as possible. We are going to turn on this. We're going to get ourselves into chase mode like we like to be. We are going to aim ourselves directly at the sun, apparently, which is, I'm going to say, annoying. I can see the maneuver node marker top right there, but that's just the way it works. We are uh, 20 kilometers from Voltaion, and we're two minutes from our node. Like I said, it's going to be about four seconds. So I'm going to go down to about five seconds before, and then hit the gas. Don't know where Voltaion went. But we're going... F oh, I should probably burn. We're going faster than him. Okay, now it's kill the node, zoom on in, and get this set up right. It's this one right here is the one we care about. Uh, we don't care about target either. We want orbit. There we go. If I burn a little bit, it should bring it over to us. It is. And there's our encounter. So, next orbit. Actually, I'm going to do the thrust limiting thing again. Try to get this a little bit closer. There we go. That's the way we like it. Okay. Now, we are both orbiting the same direction, which is nice. Voltaion is going to go around. We are going to be here. We are going to add a closest approach, 200 meters, which is pretty darn good. Uh, we actually want to do this with Voltaion, though, I think. Yeah, so let's not add this alarm. Let's jump over to Voltaion. Now let's add a close approach. No valid target vessel. Oh, I should probably set the target vessel. Set as target. It doesn't have the target, but hopefully this will. Yes, add the alarm. Okay. Let's go ahead and do an orbit. Uh, this is going to be a boring orbit because we're so low. So I'll be back when we are at the ship. Okay, we are in the physics window of the recoverable rescue. I believe we are in target mode, but I can't actually guarantee that. <laughs> but it says we're heading towards it, which we are. And so I'm going to do this to get myself actually heading towards it. Are you excited, Ankro? You should be. Yeah, one thing I would like to have on this thing is... I think I might have time. Uh, distance, target selector, available. Uh, rendezvous. Time to... See, I want... Time to... The, okay, let's just close this. We'll worry about it later. We're, we're kind of on a time crunch here. Because we don't want to smack into the ship. <laughs> yeah, we don't need this anymore. We're, we're doing fine. We are a mere 500 meters from our ship. We're closing in. Voltaion is excited because he's going home. Ankro back at Mission Control is excited because his ship is doing far more than it was ever expected to do. Just slowing down here. There we go. Okay, now we don't need the HUD anymore. It's just going to confuse us. Well, your rescuer did not get us any contract money. But it did save a very important member of our team. There we go. We are in the ship. We have a massive 321 meters per second to get home. So we are going to do that. Next orbit, we're going to burn uh, right around here somewhere, probably. 
Uh, let's see, we need to uh, change our time so that our periapsis, our apoapsis, you want that right on the thing here to make the maximum use of it. Then we're going to add a couple tens of meters per second here. Got to change the time again. Bring that back down. Notice, by changing the time, by getting this here, that actually lowers our periapsis. That's the reason. You want to you spend the least amount of fuel possible. And there we go. That is a crash, quote unquote, and it will be in the sunlight, which I like. So let's go ahead and aim ourselves at it. Voltaion is in familiar territory now. And in 41 minutes, we are going to do this burn. I will, uh, obviously we have, we have 321, We're, we need 163. We got plenty, basically, of meters per second. Um, Ancro, your ship has handled fantastically with the addition of the solar panels, which, as I have stated before, were not his fault that they weren't on there. He was designing it for low tech. Just had to do a little upgrade. <laughs> Goodbye, Minmus. And hello, Kerbin. And hey, Moon, what's up? You're not going to screw up our orbit, are you, Moon? You better not. <laughs> okay, here we come. I'm slowing down time. Uh, we have a shot of landing on land. Whoa, we have a shot of burning through the atmosphere here. Um, I think it's probably more likely that we're going to end up on the water than the land. Although, yeah, we're going to burn upward a little bit. Yeah, this is not in time lapse. This is real time. So we are going to burn upward a little bit. To hopefully, oh, there you go. That's the end of the fuel, so... Let's see if that did it for us. <laughs> um, it did give us a periapsis of 11, so hopefully that'll be enough to, to get over this water and land right there in the desert. Um, I honestly don't remember if we have desert uh, science yet or not, but Voltaion's ready to find out, that's for sure. Uh, actually, now I'm concerned that we're not going to make it to the land, but it looks like we'll be fine. Oh yeah, we're going to make it to the land, just though. Yeah, that, that's the Astronomer's Pack with the clouds. Um, I'm very liking them. And I got Texture Replacer was the was the, the mod that I installed for this episode. Didn't really mention it all that much, but that's what happens sometimes when you're so, when you're so into what you're doing. <laughs> you forget things like mentioning the stuff that you said you were going to mention every time. Oh, we can take a crew report, probably. Yes, let's go ahead and take this crew report. Flying over Kerbin's deserts. Keep that data, then we can get another crew report. We're going to actually rotate our ship around here. Because I don't want... Uh, although, I mean, yeah, when the when the parachute goes, what I don't want is I don't want him to fall over on his... on his door. That would be a bad thing. We're coming down. It looks like, actually, we're probably going to fall over this way, probably. I'm guessing. And we can cheat, kind of go this way a little bit. I don't think these parachutes are going to save much of the craft. But hopefully they'll save the command pod, and we should probably pull them here. There we go, and... Oh, well, 7 meters per second. That's a pretty good sign. Actually going to rotate him around because it looks like I was wrong about which direction he's going to fall. And at a mere 6.9 meters per second, we touch down. And please don't kill him. That would be a terrible end to this episode. Okay, we lost a battery, but we can survive with a, with a lost battery. Okay, hop on out. Oh, well, we still need a little bit of service samples, so might as well. Okay, can you do the parkour that everybody's been doing? Ha! 
<laughs> apparently, apparently you can do it without without uh, jets. But apparently the jets don't work when he doesn't have his helmet on. That's just kind of weird. Okay, let's go ahead and recover this guy and see what kind of everything we get. Well, we get 91 science, a total of 200, allowing us to unlock another node. We got 79% of our funds back, or $4,000, which is perfectly fine by me. Um, yeah, well, the 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 ship was actually pretty cheap, which is nice, so that uh, we didn't really lose too much from the uh, the failed one. And of course, Voltion Kerman has been returned, which is awesome. Okay, let's go buy our tech stuff. The Claw. Let's go ahead and unlock that thing and more plane parts, which can only be good. Uh, those of you who have expressed the desire to build me planes, please take into account that you'll probably have this to work with, uh, this tech node here. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have this tech note as well. Um, I would like to start sending out more than one guy per flight, because we have so many guys waiting in the wings. It would be nice to get those guys out there. Um, but yeah, we're not going to be getting these solar panels very soon, more science, etc. But uh, things are looking pretty good as far as that's concerned. Let's check out our contracts. Oh, ah, plant a flag on the moon. I'm going to accept this. Uh, rescue some guy. Test this. Uh, t I, I, you know, I'm gonna accept this. I just, I, I don't want it to, I don't want it to expire. <laughs> I want, I want to test the, the thing on in splash down. Uh, explore Duna, even Mike, uh, Mike Ike. Uh, stack separator in flight over Kerbin. Uh, I'm actually not gonna accept that one because, because I just don't know when the next time I'm gonna be testing anything. Um, okay. Next episode. We're actually going to fly the ship next episode that I thought I was going to be flying this episode. And that is, not the Moho ship here, Slam Chest's Space Explorer. Um, I actually don't know if I'm going to be launching that one next. Because I was going to send that one to uh, to Minmus to, to do this. Although it could. Let's, let's check it out. Does this thing, what does it have? It's got landing gear. It's got it's got this thing that's which is crazy. Um, I could send this to Moon possibly. Uh, that's tell you what. Let's call that Plan A. We're gonna send this to Moon to plant a flag. Um, I don't know if that's viable, but if it is, I'm gonna do it. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this. I definitely enjoyed playing it. I am Fifth Horseman, and I will, as always, talk at you later.